live in Nashville, Tennessee. You are listening to the Nashville Daily Podcast. Nashville's number one daily podcast. Brought to you by Think Nashville. Think Nashville. Think Brad. Think Brad. It's Nashville Daily Podcast. Good morning and welcome to the Nashville Daily Podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by thinkbrad.com. You can call him at 615-856-3270. I almost have the number memorized. I've been working on that behind the scenes. Just saying it in my head a couple times. That's what I mean behind the scenes. Also joining me at the table today is the man, the myth, the legend, Aaron Pennington. Sometimes it's more of a myth, but I'm here today. It's like the Sasquatch. Do you believe Sasquatch is a myth or is he real? We have not found the missing link, Stuart, so you tell me. I think he's real. I, I, I legitimately think the Yeti and the Sasquatch are hanging out in a club. They, they found the joints. They found the joints, <laughs> and it's with, in, within the mountains, well, the somebody, deep caves. Well, somebody who uh, also may have found some solace and, and uh, will be joining the, uh, the, the retirement club, uh, like the Sasquatch and the Yeti, is uh, John Cooper. We're going to be talking about that here uh, on this episode because, uh, you know, he's he's probably going to be off in an island somewhere where nobody can bother him. He is walking out the door. And, uh, yeah, John Cooper's walking out the door. We're going to be talking about that here uh, in a little bit. He's not seeking re-election. Uh, but, sir, I found this uh, yesterday on the Tennessee. Um, there's going to be an official Nashville monopoly in, uh, that's released, I think, like later this year. Okay. Um, but right now, uh, so I, so I found this on the Tennessee. And, um, Isn't there the Nashopoly? Like that you can buy it like at Opry Mills and like Kroger and stuff. It's like Nashopoly. Uh, it's honestly, like, it, it, but like it's like the fake game of Monopoly. Oh, uh, okay. This, so this is the real one. Made um, by like actual Hasbro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So are they owned by Hasbro? Th- this is going to be. Uh, I'm not sure. It does say it later in this article. I remember reading about it. Uh, the Nashville edition will see locally themed squares replace the classic boardwalk and park place from the original game. Um, but here's the cool thing. We can, and I know we will, we can email in inputs on what locations are featured in the game. Hey, Nick, go ahead the, and uh, show the screen real quick so people so can email I, this guy. I'm, I'm very surprised that we can't pick uh, like the get out of jail free card uh, type things or community chest and chance cards. Um, because I think those would be hilarious. Like the chance cards are going to be, there was a bomb that exploded in downtown Nashville. Uh, it, it could be that it could be just pay your rent in Nashville yeah, yeah. and you'll lose half your money. You lose half your money Yeah, yeah. there. Um, there's also the chance of, um, getting shot on 65. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Or, uh, on 40. Yeah. <laughs> it seems we're, we're getting a rock thrown at your car. Yeah, that could be. Yeah. Uh, hitting a pothole. That one's uh, really, that's more likely than all <laughs> of them right now. Uh, what else is there? Um, having the runs after eating hot chicken. Ooh, man. Okay. So we found, we found the negatives on the chance cards. What are the positives? Um, the state of Tennessee GDP is really well. Well, no, this has to be something that no, happens for to you specifically. Oh, to me specifically. <laughs> I had coffee from Caliber Coffee. Okay, okay. That's a good one. Yeah. There there seems to be more negative ones than um, positive ones that are easy to think about. I had a burger from Cletus. Oh, that's a good one. And uh, speaking of Cletus, we had Shane Nasby, the founder of Cletus, on episode 1000 that happened yesterday. And you can head over to our YouTube channel, Nashville Daily Podcast, to watch that episode what would be a good one to you? Get a free access to the Parthenon. That one would be cool. Uh, get a uh, um, Middle Tennessee wide YMCA membership. That'd be a good one. Ooh, that's a good one. I like that one. Um, getting the view of the skyscraper that we were in a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah. That one would be good. Uh, and I think my favorite one would be unlimited Mike's ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. That would be really good. Uh, all right. So a few of the squares will be dedicated to the iconic Nashville landmarks, making the Nashville game, uh, making it a true experience. Uh, let's see. The they game's s- coming out in October. Yeah. So I think uh, we're going to dedicate an entire, ep- like five, six or seven episodes, however long it takes us to play 
and we're going to play Monopoly here on the podcast. Oh, the, I mean, that's going to be amazing. We're just going to do it live. Yeah, we're it's just going to be a live. It's just going to be a live game of Monopoly. It could yeah. be thirteen hours. It could be ten hours. <laughs> uh, so this is pretty cool, and you can uh, email. I, I wish you could email for the community chest and chance cards, but you can't. You can only uh, email for apparently, according to the Tennessean, okay. which locations are going to be featured. So Tom Top Trumps is the official manufacturer of the Nashville Monopoly game through a licensing licensing agreement with creator Hasbro. So they still own Monopoly. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. All right. I am thrilled to be playing some Monopoly. Do you think uh uh was it Boardwalk is going to be replaced with Broadway? Broadway? Yeah. 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 That's awful. Yeah. <laughs> it just makes sense. Uh, so there's a, a new thing that has just launched here in Tennessee, uh, and it's kind of like the Whiskey Trail in Tennessee. Uh, so you have the Tennessee Whiskey Trail. You also have the Tennessee Wine Trail, which oh, is yeah, not talked right. about that often. No. Like, people are like, there's a wine trail in Tennessee. There is. Yeah. Uh, there's like 15 or so wineries throughout the state of Tennessee. Three or four of them are towards Centerville. Uh, my favorite ones include Grinder Switch. Uh, and then you also have Horseshoe Bend Winery, uh, but there's a new like ty- kind of trail which, that which, just launched. Which which winery was it that had the tomato wine? The Horseshoe Bend Winery. Okay, it's in Centerville, and it's like you you're driving back there, and then it's like a one way dirt road, and you're like, am I going the right way? And do you feel like if somebody's playing the um, the song from that movie Deliverance, oh, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. like, I think I'm going the right and way. And then you find tomato wine. And then you find tomato wine. <laughs> and you're just like, oh, I'm having a good old time. Um, and then you hear the song in the distance and it brings back nightmares. <laughs> but there's going to be a new trail throughout Tennessee. And this just literally announced, I think, like a week ago. This is going to be the Tennessee Ale Trail. I love the name. They did it so well. It's a great name. Nick, if you, if you don't mind, we'll show their website uh, real quick. Uh, they do not have a map on where the breweries are going to be throughout the state of Tennessee yet. Okay. Um, all right. <laughs> so, so this is uh, it. Like you can sign up. Okay. Uh, let's go to their Instagram real quick. See what happens there. So this is just, uh, so it's like an stuff app. That's literally brand new. Yeah. I've, I've heard about this, but I, I honestly, I thought it was already public. Uh, I didn't know it wasn't public yet. Um, I think they've been working on this for a bit. It's in partnership with the Tennessee Department of Agriculture and the Tennessee uh, Craft Brewers Guild. Yep. So the Craft Brewers Guild, it founded in 2012. Uh, they launched the Tennessee Ale Trail January 23rd. Uh, it's with participation from over 60 breweries across the state. Um, Sharon uh, Cheek, who's the executive director of the Tennessee Craft Brewers Guild, told the Business Journal, we specifically designed the trail with both residents and tourists in mind. We really want Tennesseans to be proud of Tennessee beer. Um, So it says in the Tennessean, or sorry, in the Business Journal, to participate, like Stuart said, beer lovers can sign up for a passport that allows them to tap into a point system to win prizes. What type of prizes? Free beer? I don't know. But since launching three days ago, 450 people across nine states have signed up. And this article came out January 25th. So there's probably way more than 450. Yeah. Uh, At the time of this article, there have been 14 brewery check-ins. The Ale Trail is meant to highlight guild members in their work in local communities and with local agricultural, but also showcase them as small businesses. Um, So this is pretty cool. They also said... um, if you look at the farm to table movement, more and more people uh, want to know what they're eating. They want to know where their food is coming from. Uh, Cheek also said, I think uh, that that is helping the craft beer industry because we're seeing more and more people ask about where their beer is coming from and wanting to explore local options for beer, just like they're shopping at the farmer's market. The, the interesting thing about that is Tennessee does not have the climate to grow hops. Yeah, and no. so all the hops for all of these breweries have to be imported either from like the Northwest or like from other countries. Yeah, and so like Tennessee just does not have the climate, so our hops will almost never be local unless they figure out a way to grow inside of like a greenhouse with the, the that specific climate. Yeah, so our buddies at Tailgate they are in this. Guess which location? There's only one location. The West Nashville. No, Midtown it is East. Interesting. <laughs> Why not all? I know. I know. They have a lot of locations, but a lot of your favorite breweries that are uh, very common in Nashville, Yeehaw, Yazoo, 
uh, Southern Grist. Uh, Southern Grist has a few locations. Living Waters, which is in East, I believe, Jackalope, um, East Nashville Beer Works, Bearded Iris, Blackstone. ton of great breweries in uh, Nash. Nashville's got a lot of them. We got, that a, lot. Are, that are we in got this, a lot uh, of breweries, guys. Uh, I, I think it's like, what, 27 <laughs> or 31 craft breweries in Nashville Grown now? by the day, probably. Somebody comment below that number. Yeah. All right. It is Hot Chicken Week here in Nashville, and we had to participate. Unfortunately, <laughs> when I had to participate, <laughs> unfortunately, when I say we had to participate, I didn't get the seven dollar option. I got the nine dollar. I know well, the seven dollar. option. Well, so it's it's some of these places we don't often get the chance to go there very much. So we don't necessarily want to try the we want to try maybe something that we are is off the seven dollar option. Yeah. Um. So. For example, we went to Slow Burn mm-hmm. in Hendersonville uh, yesterday for Hot Chicken Week, and um, I learned that was my first time at Slow Burn, um, and the Hendersonville location is the only location. As yeah, uh, so right they, now. they started in East Nashville, I believe, and then they had a Madison location, and then I think they took over like a Jack in the Box. In, it, lo- it looked like a jack yeah. box or some, some, some type of restaurant in Hendersonville. Yeah, and I saw that they have breakfast until noon there. Which is a great time to have breakfast. They there. just have an entire separate breakfast menu that's like just like hanging up. And, and I said, if this, is this still available? And she said, yeah, until noon. I was like, that's amazing. Like, more people should do that. So I got a hot chicken breakfast sandwich. It was, was it spicy? Uh, I got... The uh, chicken, egg, and cheese on a biscuit, and the chicken I got at a medium level. It was their spice level didn't necessarily go in order of hotness. They just had a like it was mild, and then like you saw like a lemon pepper, and then like yeah, yeah. A, a medium, and so so it didn't necessarily I think go in order of the the hotness. Uh, but I got a medium. It really it wasn't too bad. Um, I, honestly, I think you got one of their best uh the best flavors that we've tasted in hot chicken in a while yeah so i got the mild uh tenders which are fantastic the interesting thing is i didn't eat breakfast and i didn't have that big of a lunch and so like or we did have the lunch the hot chicken yeah 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 but because i don't think i ate breakfast i didn't have anything to sell my stomach got like wrecked and because you, because all that was stirring around in there, yeah, it was hot was chicken, hot chicken. Uh, literally just hot chicken. <laughs> and if you haven't watched this yet on our YouTube channel, explore.nash, we released a video on the battle of the minds trivia contest between Brad runners, a sponsor of our show. And uh, the loser had to eat the hottest hot chicken. And it, this video has been out for a few days. I lost. I had to eat the hottest hot chicken. And that has still destroyed my stomach. <laughs> and so I think anytime I eat hot chicken now, I'm just like, okay, here it comes. Uh, but I want to throw this up, Nick, if you don't mind. We'll throw up my computer uh, one more time. And uh, these are all the people that are participating in Hot Chicken Week. Uh, it's This is going until February 5th. Uh, so we'll just scroll down real quick. Bad Axe Throwing Company. That looks like a little pizza type thing. That one's interesting. It's like I think it looks like a like an open sub, like yeah, an, uh, like, like an, an open face, ho- open face hoagie kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. The City Winery one looks really good. I wonder if like they're drizzling some honey on it. Hattie B's always clutch. Um, Harriet's Rooftop. I have never heard of that restaurant before in my entire life. How about Family Tacos? Never heard of that place either. I, I want to try um, Waldo's because Waldo said they're never getting in the hot chicken game when I first and went in there. And now they're there. Now they're there. Hold up. Uh, Loveless does hot chicken. Oh, shoot. Um, and then Red 615 Chicken. I think we'll be having that before the end of the week um, yes. just because of their hot their chicken crunch wrap. wrap is so good. Stay golden. That looks good. Like a little biscuit. That one's interesting because um, it has grounds. like little red onions on it. Mm-hmm. Let's say golden. Uh, Waldo's. I, yeah, I think I, I want to try reds. I I know I love reds. Um, their crunch wrap is fantastic. The Waldo's looks really good. And then I really want to try that did see, bad axe. Did you see Mimi's Kitchen at Nashville Underground? It is literally a mac and cheese skillet oh. with hot chicken Look placed on thing. top of it. Nick, I wish you had a microphone so you can give commentary <laughs> on this right now. I know you don't eat spicy things, but uh, it would be nice to to hear you. 
you will get you a microphone at some point. All right. So today's episode is brought to you by Bowtie Barber Club. And if you are looking for a haircut in the Donaldson community or just anywhere in Nashville, head to Donaldson and head to bowtiebarberclub.com to book your appointment. They do beard trims, haircuts, nose wax, eyes, ear or eyebrows wax, ears wax. They do uh, straight razor sa- shaves. And they also have their own whiskey line, which is pretty awesome. So if you're looking for a great place, check out bowtiebarberclub.com. All right. So uh, today's featured headline and what most people will be talking about in Nashville. Um, at least for at least three for three days. Yeah, three days. And, and I think it'll be gone before then. Uh, mayor John Cooper, our current mayor of Nashville, is not seeking reelection um, for a second term. Um, and uh, we, we listened to a little bit of his press conference, which is very interesting and very surprised he had a press conference. Uh, that was on uh, WSMV. Yeah, it, it, to me, it didn't warrant a press conference. Like, the announcement itself was, was good enough. He basically made it like a, a weird little state of the uh, metro address. Which should like be coming a, in, like, two months. Yeah. so Not this early in the year. So it was very interesting. I thought he was going to endorse somebody at the end. Um, but... Anyway, so he's not going to seek a second term. Um, we we do have a, a few things we're going to be talking about alongside of this. Uh, Cooper's timeline. He came into office in a, a very odd way. Um, Metro Nashville, since it's only been around since the early 60s, has only had, what, like 11 mayors? Uh, nine. Nine mayors. Yes, so I believe it's nine. Yeah, so it, it, it you know anybody who served as a mayor of Metro Nashville is a piece of history. And so we're, we're going to be talking about the weirdness that happened during, um, I maybe, almost want to say maybe 11, Briley, but uh, Cooper's time in office uh, because it's just a weird situation on how he came into office. Uh, one of our first episodes of the podcast was talking about Mayor Cooper running for office do you remember that yes i remember yeah and so um th- there's a timeline on the tennessean um and he announced this yeah so there's been nine yesterday. there's been yes he, not, yeah. he announced this yesterday so there's been nine mayors for metro nashville davison county so once they incorporated the yep. city county government in the 1960s uh there's been nine mayors but there's a there's a really good list of mayors uh on wikipedia which i know is a terrible resource to use <laughs> but i digress okay so he came in in a weird time uh mayor megan Barry, she stepped down and briley she, took she, over yeah she stepped down in 20 uh, 17 18 18 i think and then and briley, briley was a, a mayor for a year kind of like basically an an incumbent mayor and then the state said no you need to have an election (laughs) and then uh so uh mayor cooper won uh he was running against briley um i believe was probably his main competition Uh, in that election if i remember carol sween yes she did really well yeah um that's who I voted for. I think it was she Swain. Did, Swain. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she did really well. Um, and then I can't remember. Was the runoff between Briley and Cooper? I believe it was Briley and Cooper, okay. if I remember correctly. Uh, uh, it, oh, here it is. Uh, I could I could read. Cooper defeated Briley in the 2019 mayoral election and was inaugurated as mayor in September of that year. We started our podcast August 1st. 2019. So we, we, got that deep, year. we got deep covering Cooper's career. Uh, a few notable uh, timeline pieces in Cooper's uh, term. Uh, in February of 2020, uh, right before the pandemic and the tornado, Cooper strikes a new deal with National SC over the new stadium. Um, we went to that first game of nashville sc at nissan stadium we did that's right um and then literally within a week there was the tornado yep that was and within march like of two weeks there was covid so march of uh, march 3rd of 2020 there was the ef3 tornado that came through nashville yep so that's another thing the that first happened COVID during... case was march 8th yep um, in nashville and the tennesseean conveniently forgot the riots that happened in may of 2020 yep and then there was a 34 percent tax increase that happened in the city of nashville yeah and that was june of 2020 uh and then that cooper had to push it so th- this is uh, i think where cooper even though it was unpopular cooper really kind of stuck to he ran on a very much 
the budget will the the budget will be balanced yep. platform and this is which uh, he's the first mayor i think that has yeah yeah and close. even though the property tax was immensely unpopular yeah uh, but at but the, the reason end, for that is because we lost so much money because of tourism yeah at the end of the day if he balanced the budget he came in and did what he said he was going to do in that regard so um he did that i know it's very very unpopular but at the end of the day you think we're in a better place for it. it it'd be interesting to see like it, did that put any businesses out of business? Oh, probably. It, 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 it yeah, would be probably. very interesting to see. I don't know if we can find out anything about that. Uh, and then, of course, December of tw- uh, Christmas Day of 2020, the Christmas Day bombing um, in Nashville. There, there um, was also a time where you couldn't dance in Nashville. It was like the town of Footloose. It was. It was. And, uh, uh, I mean, they uh-huh. have, um, there, there's a few things that are missing in here, but these are kind of the bigger the bigger things and luck thankfully it gets better after after this april of 2021 you see a year and four months gap before they put another notable timeline thing in there uh yeah and this is the announcement of oracle bringing 8500 jobs uh into nashville into the river north area and then this one we've been talking about this one basically the last year is the East Bank and the brand new Titan Stadium. So November of 2022, Cooper announces deal to build the new Titan Stadium, lays out East Bank vision. And we have been covering that extensively here on the podcast. Um, so now you may be wondering, now that Cooper is not seeking a re-election uh, for this upcoming mayoral race, is that how you say it, mayoral? Mayoral, yeah. 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 Uh, race, you may be wondering to yourself, who has announced so far? Oh, well, I was wondering what Cooper's going to do when he retires. Hey, man, go to the island and sit to the beach. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what island. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe there's a Cooper Island somewhere. There probably is. There's yeah. Like in the Philippines, it's like <laughs> Cooper Island. Yeah. Um, okay. do, you, do, you, do you think that uh, Cooper will go for a higher office or do you think he's done and he's, I, I he's think in he's, retirement mode? I think these last four years have been extremely stressful for him. <laughs> um, waking up with all of these devastating things that happened in Nashville. <laughs> he just wakes up. And he's like, Oh God, uh, not again. Um, I, I think I, if I was in that position, I would say I'm throwing in the hat. I'm walking out the door, folks. I'm done. <laughs> just holds a peace I'm, sign on the way I'm out. I'm going to go back into development into Williamson County. Yeah. <laughs> if I was Cooper. Can, can you give just, just a small history for somebody who's like, who is this? Who's the, who's this Cooper dude? Uh, and, and so like, John how Cooper, did he get to where he John, is? John Cooper was a developer, uh, and he was one of the leading developers of Williamson County. Uh, him and a few other people are the ones who really had the vision and the the funds to fund what Williamson County has become. And, and you, we were talking yesterday, Cool Springs as well, yeah, part cool being, being part of that. Yep. Almost rebranded as an entirely different area than Brentwood yep. and Franklin. Yep. Um, oh yeah, yeah, and it's 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 branded as a whole. It's branded as Cool Springs. Yeah, which and which I mean, we could say gave him the experience to probably brand the East Bank. Yeah, I, I would agree. I definitely would agree. Uh, and then he's been a Metro Council member for a while, and then I believe he was a Metro Council member at large. Which speaking of that, uh, this is a, an interesting thing that's happening in the state of Tennessee. The state of Tennessee is thinking about reducing the size of the Metro Council. We've talked about this. Yeah. Uh, currently, Metro Nashville government has 40 Metro Council members. 35 of them represent different districts throughout Tennessee or throughout Nashville. And then also uh, five of them are at council member at large. So state Tennessee is going to potentially reduce. Oh, oh, oh no. no, it's back. Oh, no, the districts are back. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. OK, but the state Tennessee is uh, planning on reducing from 40 down to 20 uh, council member seats, which I don't know how that's going to change the districts throughout Nashville, but it could. Oh, there's the, oh, it's in the <laughs> it's, distance. It is in the distance. Oh, it's in the distance. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about who may be running uh, as of right now. This is from the Tennessean, and this article came out January 31st. So yes. this is probably the most accurate um, situation right now of who has announced they're running. So, yes, this is more of who is probably the most official candidates that are running so far. We, we will hold discussion uh, for this probably until closer 
uh, when more candidates are out there. I, uh, I want to do a debate yeah, in here, in the I studio. I would love to do I a debate. I think that would be awesome. I think that would be great. Um, but this is more just information on who has really announced. Um, there, there have been some speculations. There are some people who have said a year ago that they're running and then uh, they've already backed out. So this is the best up-to-date list so far of m the most official candidates. Um, qualifying to, to qualify, all of this remains open until May 18th for the August election. All right, so um, you, you guys better get on it. So th there are some chances that you'll see more people in the race. I definitely think you that... Think Big Bird's going to run? Big Bird, yeah, Bert and Ernie. Bert and Ernie? Yeah. Oscar I, the Grouch? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, okay, so who is running so far? Uh, we have uh, council member. Do they have photos for all these people? Yes, Let, they do. We'll, 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 we'll put these photos up. up. The first one is council member Sharon Hurt. All right. Uh, she is an at-large Metro Council member. She, she, so she doesn't represent a district right now. She does not. I, she did, I believe, uh, previous to her at-large um yeah, she. I think it was like a North Nashville. I think so. Yeah, district. Um, she announced her candidacy in December. She served on the council since 2015. So yes, she would have most likely had to have been um, in a district. Most likely, I can't remember for sure. Um, so that's Council Member Sharon Hurt. Um, her mayoral campaign champions job creation, workforce development, the growth of small business nonprofits. Uh, from her seat on council, Hurt has advocated for inclusion of minority and women owned businesses. He sponsored legislation asking National Electric Service to uh, round up electricity bills to the nearest dollar to help fund weatherization for homeowners with limited income. That pissed off a lot of people. <laughs> <It really? Yeah. laughs> a lot of people are like, why am I paying an additional 55 cents on yeah. my bill? <laughs> uh, prior to her time in the council, uh, Hurt worked as president and CEO of Jefferson Street United Merchants Prop, uh, Partnerships. She continues to serve as the executive director of Streetworks, a nonprofit working to eliminate the HIV AIDS epidemic. Uh, the next announcement, I think this one has been the most significant announcement so far, is Freddie O'Connell. Freddie O'Connell is the go-to council member to give uh, sound bites to news and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, because he represents the downtown, downtown district. District, or at least District he, Nineteen. Um, I, I, yeah, he yeah. represents District Nineteen, which is the fastest growing district according to the Tennessean. Yes. Uh, since his time on council, he's pushed for improved transit infrastructure. That has not gone well. <laughs> increased affordable housing and more services for those experiencing homelessness. He also spearheaded an effort to regulate entertainment vehicles downtown. People probably were upset about that one. O'Connell was the first to announce his mayoral candidacy. He said his decision comes from a desire uh, for clearer uh, policies and more decisive actions surrounding Nashville's response to the homeless. Uh, I will say the least clear policy that's come from Nashville is surrounding the regulations oh, the for buses. party buses. Uh, so that's been, very interesting. It's been not clear at all. Yeah. Uh, prior to his time on the council, O'Connell chaired the Metro Transit Authority's Board of Directors, was uh, president of the Salem Town Neighbors Neighborhood Association, and served on the board of Walk Bike Nashville. And the third and final candidate listed here in the Tennessean is Matt Wiltshire. He is a Nashville economic development and affordable housing veteran. He announced his candidacy in July. Uh, wow. So months prior, Wiltshire left his position at the uh, Metro Development and Housing Agency, teasing his run for mayor. That's an interesting step, isn't it? Metro Housing Agency, straight up to mayor. It's a very interesting step. Instead of going to the council? Yeah. 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 Um, his campaign highlights include improving city services, investing in neighborhoods, individual needs, increasing affordable housing, and increasing funding for Metro. This is very similar to a Cooper platform. Yeah. Uh, the, at least the most similar um, between Fiscally. all of these three. Uh, within while, while with the MDHA, Wiltshire encouraged public-private partnerships to increase affordable housing. Which and, he, I uh, think he was the one that helped, like, Amazon give into the Barnes Fund or whatever okay. that fund is called. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, he also served as director of the Mayor's Office of Economic and Community Development through three 
administrations, which three administrations in Nashville was not that long. Yeah, no, it was because, like three years. Because of Barry Briley <laughs> and Cooper. Yeah, was, so altogether it was like four years, yeah. four and a half years. Yeah, so, so it wasn't wasn't very long yeah. for these three administrations. But, um, hey, good for him. He gets to stay three administrations. I, I think there's going to be a few more announcements for mayor. Uh, if that May 18th deadline is the time to to register for the August thing, I think there's going to be a few more announcements. I think so too. Do you think we'll see Carol Swain again? I hope so. Yeah. So maybe th- maybe I will run. No, I'm kidding. I, I don't want to <laughs> be in politics. <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, those are the the candidates, and uh, that is what all that we have for today. Um, we are going to be bringing uh, a, another artist here on the podcast for the first time here in a while. Um, because we it, we've we've done um, artists for a long time when we had our audio only version. We're excited to bring artists back onto the podcast so that's coming tomorrow uh that we'll have here in studio uh but let us know your thoughts on um mayor cooper who has not who has said he is not running again for re-election and uh i think it's very uh interesting but i get it let us know your thoughts down in the comments nick play that outro music yeah so um let us know your comments on youtube we may just be reading them allowed here uh i will try to read out loud sometimes i mess up yeah we will read your commentary if you have not subscribed make sure you are subscribed at national daily podcast on youtube apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcast and go watch our new video over explore.nash stewart battles brad for the battle of the minds see who knows national best see you tomorrow Thank you for listening to the Nashville Daily Podcast. If you want to learn more, head to NashvilleDailyPodcast.com. You can also follow us on social media at Explore.Nash on Instagram, Nashville Daily Podcast on YouTube, and Explore.Nash on YouTube as well. The Nashville Daily Podcast is an Explore LLC production, copyright 2023.